stop that. sure what I'm gonna do next so I'm gonna swap out my water see how red that water is and I'm going to bring in my new water I think I'm going to work on gosh there's so many parts to work on this and I'm not sure where I want to go no, too long of bristles. Should be just about right. I get a little conflicted when I hit this point in my paintings because I'm not real sure what I want to do with them. Ooh, I need to take off my glasses. And in this case, the only thing I am sure of is that I want it to be finished. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of certainty with this piece right now. Okay. Oh, see? That's what I was waiting for. So this brush is toast for now. I need to find another very small brush. I have quite a few brushes to pick from. Just have to find the one, which is not always an easy thing to do. Oh, but I think I found it. I have quite a few pretty awesome brushes. But finding the perfect one is sometimes a little bit difficult. You notice this one has a very short handle. Um, it's usually used for like miniatures and things like that. This miniature work is very up close, very detailed way of uh, painting. So right now I am working on the eyes and I really prefer working on eyes when I have a reference in front of me because I tend to default into different shading that, uh, well, doesn't make sense. But as I don't have that option with this piece, we are just going to wing it and hope for the best. The only problem with taking off my glasses is then I have a hard time finding the color I want if they're too far. But I can't see up close with my glasses on. So, the goal here is to make the eye match this eye and also be lit from this candle. So it has to be lighter than this eye, but still have a lot of the same traits and characteristics. One thing that's really hard with women is making them have eyes that have depth and dimension without making them look old. Um, we're accustomed to lines depicting age, but the eye has a lot of lines around it. And so oftentimes it's difficult to get that, 
that uh, little little nuance between age and simply reality. The best thing for me here is to layer up in very small little sections, just a little bit at a time. I'm letting the layers dry in between, so you'll notice I swap around to different areas of the face. That's so that the, the layers I just laid down can dry. I'm not putting water down first. I'm just going straight for the pigment. But I'm also being very light in the amount of pigment that I pick up because I don't want anything to be too dark. I want to see the colors below. I want everything to really stand out. So what I'm doing here is just trying to get the shadows a bit stronger and also get her face to be a bit less yellow toned. I like a little bit of yellow tone, but not quite as much as is on here. Also, I need to create some depth and shaping because the face is round, it's not flat. So, what I'm trying to do is keep my nice highlights, but also present where the face curves. Not always an easy thing to do, especially with these particular lighting choices. One way to show different types of lighting is to use warm and cool colors. So I'll use greens and blues for this side of the face for the shadows and the reflected lighting, and then I'll use oranges, yellows, warm toned greens, purples that are warm toned for this side of the face. So I still have my shadows and my shading, but they are affected by the light source that I have. This is tricky lighting. I really should have gotten a reference picture <laughs> for this, but I didn't, so I'm just going to wing it. Going for is a bit of color on her cheeks, something not quite so yellowish, but I don't want, oh my god, pink either, which is not the easiest because watercolors tend to come in oh my god pink and they expect you to just kind of use it sparingly but sometimes you have to go a little bit heavy handed in order to get it to show up we want a nice pink to this though because the time period that I've used tended to be a bit overboard with their blushing. And while I don't want to do the circus clown circles that some of them had, I still need to give it a little bit of that tone. And then I'm going to wander back to her eye. See about getting it a bit more defined. recently found um, nail brushes for nail artists and they are amazing because they're made for just the tiniest little details. Really fantastic. I love using those for stuff like this too. But this brush is going to do for what we're doing here. Shaping the 
thing with eyes is that there's no real pure white areas except for the highlights in the eye and even then um, they tend to have just a tiny hint of other colors eyes are a strange 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 thing to paint to work with just in general and as always have a little tissue just in case you need to dab away having done a bit too much dark in an area as long as it's still wet you can lift it fairly easily I'm looking for a nice kind of light brownish purple in order to even out her eyes yeah that's more like it and of course we need to go back to that eye burning pink bring her a bit more color to her cheeks Sometimes it's a little bit hard to tell if you're going overboard or not on color when you're doing skin because there's so many little fine layers that you need to incorporate in. It's always better to go light and darken as you need it than to go dark and have to lighten things. It's usually the rule of thumb with watercolors. One thing I like is when doing stuff like this is to have some nice, really strong shadows and shading. Just kind of helps over dramatize the lighting a bit more. The softer your shadows are, the less harsh the light seems, the more kind of evenly lit the entire area seems. And the harder your shadows are, the more harsh the lighting will look, the more extreme. So that's what I'm doing here, is I'm darkening this up a bit to give it a little bit more of a sharp look not too sharp because I've got a wand over here that's going to be a source of light as well but I do want the candle to really stand out as the primary source of light and of course anywhere that you have something overlapping the skin like the locks of hair here or the bow down here it's always good to have a nice sharp shadow line to bring out that piece and lights come in many many colors many forms you can change the color that you're using to create a lit area that's not just a flat yellow or a flat white you know you can add browns and greens and purples and all kinds of awesome colors and this also helps you create form Create the curve of the body because the body is really not flat pretty much anywhere it's really tempting when you get something that looks nice to just leave it because this looks nice but when you put it next to the other eye it looks unfinished and while you don't want to overwork things, you still want it to look finished and have depth. 
just be interesting to look at overall. So, what we're doing is just going in and creating our harder shadows. And then I go back through with water and I soften whichever edges need to be softened. Some edges need to be hardened, but when you have to go back and do that, you really want it to dry first. And the eyeball is not white. It is shades of grays and pinks and blues. It's so much more than just a white space. It's an orb. It has shape. It has veins. It's a wonder of the human body. So you really want to make sure to pay good attention and make the whites of your eyes really rounded. And you get a little bit too much of a color, you just kind of blend it out. Remember, you don't have to stay in one spot on your painting. You can jump around, hop over to a curl that caught your attention, or to the angle of a brow that you want to adjust. There are no rules on what you have to paint first, so really just go with whatever captures your mind at the time, because your brain is so much faster than it seems, and you'll notice things that you want to fix. Your brain will go, over here, over here, we need to fix this part. If you listen to it right then, Usually, you already know how to fix it. Now, one thing that's kind of common to do in a lot of um, Asian style anime works and things is to put pink on the tips of the nose, the tops of the shoulders, the fingertips, those kind of things. Um, I don't suggest doing that overly much, but it does tend to leave a hint of the sun having touched that part of the skin and the skin reacting to it. So it's nice to throw in there once in a while, here and there. Give yourself just a little bit of light and life. You'll notice I've used green, blue, purple, all of that in the skin tones, because all of that is in your skin. Even darker skin tones, they're not just brown, they are an amazing array of different colors. So it's really important to study up on those colors when you start to work on it a human figure, or a figure with humanoid traits, I guess. Okay, we're gonna bring this line back since I accidentally demolished it. And for these dark areas on the eye, I'm actually using the combination of Shadow Violet and Maroon that we used on the background. Because
because any place you can incorporate that in will really help tie the background to the foreground. And it's just a nice color overall. I've left it all mixed up on my palette so it's pretty easy to get a hold of. Don't be afraid of color. Don't be afraid of darks. Don't be afraid of strange color combinations. Because Actually, the only way you're going to get life into your paintings is if you start exploring with really bizarre color combinations and go, oh hey, I like this. Or, hey, that is the exact color that I thought skin would be. I didn't realize it was a real color. I've said that many times to myself. Just, holy cow, that's an actual color. making pretty good progress on our little fairy maid here. Okay, I would like to do a nice deep dark blue-green that's almost black because that's the shade that I've been using for the center of her eyes and also the outside patterning of her eyes. With watercolor they always say avoid using black and like any rule in painting there's a time and a place for it um, for the most part, you do want to pick other colors in the place of black, because black tends to be a very flat, uh, lifeless color. It's very dull, tends not to have much by way of personality, and there are quite a few other colors that make a better black than black does. Um, one of my favorites to use for the night sky is indigo because it just reads better it has more life and personality in this case we're using a mixture of indigos and greens just to get that personality back in because eyes should always be full of life now you have to be careful when you're adding pinks and veins to the eyeball because bloodshot eyes are not pretty. Nobody likes a bloodshot eye. But without those veins, it does not become an eyeball. So keep them light, keep them simple. I really like how dark her lips are. I'm actually going to add a bit more to them because they stand out so strongly against how light her skin is. And I like that a great deal. But I want them to have a little bit more shape. You'll notice between these two eyes, they're starting to take the same tones and everything. But this one just looks so much more alive and finished than this one because this one's got the highlights, the eyelashes, the little bits of flecks in the skin, little changes that, that really make it come to life. Whereas this one it hasn't quite gotten there. It's getting there, but it's not there yet. I do want to give this eyeball a little tiny bit more shape 
Remember the lid overlaps the eyeball, so you will have a shadow of the lid. Depending on how wide open your eyes are, the lid will look different. Okay, now this looks a little bit too flat to me, so I'm going to smooth it out a bit. Shade in this part just a bit more. You have to wait for that to dry. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm just gonna hop over here and get a bit of blue and play a little with her hair. Now keep in mind this blue is just a base coat. Um, like I said before, we're not painting by watercolor purism, which means we're going to be bringing in other types of paints and materials in to create the look that we want to get. So while we want her hair to be white, for right now, we just want to create the form and the volume that we're looking for. So I'm taking blue, really bright blue, and a nice amethyst violet, and we're just shading and creating chunks of hair moving in different directions as it's curled and twisted and plopped on top of her head. This is another time when having reference is good, not just for where light and shadow goes, but also the direction that the different hair strands go. You know, having them flow in a curve or be pulled back extremely tight, or even move in a direction completely opposite from what you're expecting is really important. These, this base work is what gives hair life and body and volume when you start getting into the super textury areas and little details. So always take your time and build up your volume. Get the depth you want. Don't immediately start out drawing every single little strand of hair. I used to do that. But the only way to draw real hair was to paint in every single strand. It wasn't until later that it was like, no, you put in the shape first, then you start painting in the strands. There is an artist who does these incredible realistic paintings of animals, photorealistic, and she does paint every single hair. Um, there's also a, a, an artist who does modifications of like briar horses, where she does the same thing, paints every single strand of hair. And it looks amazing, and it looks fantastic. But, when you're working on the human head of hair, which is just this big puff ball, there's no reason to paint every single strand that will be hidden. So just build yourself up a nice framework first. Love me some fabulous hair. Now, like uh, I said the other day, I'm not going up here because I forgot to draw in the crown. So I need to actually draw that in before I do any painting on this side. But I think I am ready to do some more work on this eye.
If you're going to spend a ton of time on any part of a figure that has a face, spend your most time on your eyes. There's a reason why they're called the window to the soul, and a well-painted eye will completely change the way people look at your paintings. And it will change your painting from, oh, that's pretty, to, I can't stop looking at her eyes, which is what you want people to say. I can't stop looking into her eyes. going through and adjusting things a little that are bothering me. Don't be afraid to change your lights and your shadows and things to suit you. In this case, I wanted the whole of her throat a bit stronger this a bit darker. I have to put on my glasses because someone is messaging me and I'm not sure what platform they're messaging me on, so I have to actually look at my computer monitor. That's not too bad. So we're going to let her face and her skin dry. I think we're doing pretty good with that. My big question is, what color am I going to do this dress? I really like how bright it is against the background. I like the idea of it being really light and white, but I also want some brilliant reds for the holly berries. So I think the one thing I've settled on is that I want her corset to be a nice white brocade with gold accents. So, in order to pull this off, I'm going to have to be a little bit tricky with my coloring. It needs to mostly be warm. Now, with corsets, the fabric stretches in multiple directions. So, what you need to do is follow where the fabric bunches, which is usually right around the waist, just small, little bunches, and then you have to go up and follow where it curves around the bust, around the ribs. There's not really an easy way to make this work. So you just go, just like with the skin, you just go layer by layer. Usually the bottom areas tend to flatten out and not be very scrunchy. It's right around the, the middle of the waist that tends to be the scrunchiest area. <sighs> Gonna do a little of this. White is never just white. It's important to remember that. White is a reflection of every color around it. So the colors that I'm using right now in her dress are probably going to change as I color in the bow and the other areas that will affect how this works, how the light is received. In this case, I'm giving it more of a green tint because it's going up near the little holly leaves. so far. Now because I want it to have gold, and I'm actually going to go in with real gold paint and do the accents so that they glisten, I'm going to add yellows, creams, reds, those types of colors to bring out the 
gold tones. You really can't go too wrong with what colors you pick to make a white piece of fabric. There's not a whole lot that could, you know, go horribly wrong on you. The key is to keep it light. Keep it light. Keep it very light little layers. Don't let the pigment get too strong. And don't forget to change colors often. Don't do it all yellow, all pink, all blue. Light is every color. White is just every color bouncing back at your eyes. So don't be afraid to pop in those colors. And like I said, if you go too dark, it's okay. You can either tap it off using a paper towel, or we can go over it with another medium to brighten it up. So, this is no panic painting, no stress. What I'm doing right here is using just plain water and I'm creating a harder edge along the outside of her corset. A nice hard straight edge to help make it look a bit smoother. And also to bring in some of that background color. Now underneath this outer corset, we have a striped under corset. Once again, I am at a loss as to which colors I want to use. I think I'll go with a blue-green because I am really sticking with quite a few cool tones with her. And leaving the reds and warm tones is more of a accent. So we're going to give her this nice striped panel on the inside of her bodice. I'm very fond of stripes. I like throwing them in randomly on clothing, usually where they're not expected. One of the great things about this style of clothing is they had such a fabulous way of tossing together patterns that normally really shouldn't go together. But they did it, and they made it look amazing. Now, for continuity's sake, I'm going to make sure that this green goes all the way up like so. You don't want your stripes to not match the same panel of material. And stripes can be very subtle. They don't have to be Oh my god, in your face, neon pink and black, you know, you can just a little bit of texture, a little bit of change is more than enough for pieces like this. Have to kind of 
fiddle with my stripes a little bit here because when I was drawing them in I didn't make sure that they went in a smooth and straight line. It's okay for your paints to go darker in the middle or lighter on the edges. Um, if anything, try to make that happen. Try to make the stripes darker where they'd be shaded, darker where they'd curve into the waist, lighter where they'd curve out. So you can get that real sense of form that sense that her body is not a flat pane. I'm going to use some extremely bright green in here because I feel like this has gone a bit too blue on me. So I'm taking this absolutely neon yellow green and pushing the color into a more green tone. I don't want to stray too far from the Christmas colors. But that blue provides a really nice bit of depth this green, so I'll just darken this up a bit. I'm gonna let these stripes dry before I work any more in there because I want to keep the stripes separate. I want to keep the lines nice and clean in that area. Now it looks pretty light on the camera. Let me see if I can... Ooh, I'm not used to how this camera works. Seeing if I can get a little bit of a closer look. You see her eyes are starting to take shape a bit better. Remember, you don't have to decide every color right away that you're going to use right now. Just stick with the stuff that you know you're going to do. And then move on and slowly change things as you need to. In this case, I want the leaves to be much more green, have a lot more depth. Right now they're kind of lost, pale little bits of scrap. So I'm going to start with the undersides first, darken the bottom layer of leaves, pretty dark. Remember the leaves don't have to be flat colored, they can be variegated, they can have different shades of other colors, they can be a billion different shades of green. You are not confined to one color or one tone or one value. Just going through, add in a little green here, a little green there. As my friend asked for happy little trees, because he says I'm a watercolor Bob Ross. I said, can't do happy little trees on this painting. She doesn't have any trees, so we're doing happy little holly leaves. How's that? We will do happy little trees on the first one hour class that I do. Though, that one is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be happening after Christmas. It'll be a nice easy way for you guys to paint along with me. I'll even have a materials list up so you can make sure that you're all set and ready to go before the video it will be pre-recorded so that 
I can have all of the information you need already written out. Don't be afraid of darks. Watercolors are a bit of a frustrating subject in that every time you say something like don't be afraid of doing darks, you also say, but start with the lights, except for here where you're going to go dark. <laughs> so, you know, there's no hard and fast rules when it comes to watercolor. It's something that took me a long time to learn. I always thought watercolor is one way. That's it. And it, well, it took a while for me to realize watercolors actually an amazingly flexible medium. You just have to be patient. I'm gonna jump over here and give these guys a bit of shape as well. I try to always be aware of where my light source is. Um, in this case, it's actually difficult because I have two light sources, but you can't see one of them right now. And so I'm trying to imply that light source without overwhelming this one because this is the main light source. But we're going to have a very small light source right here. It's going to be a little bit tricky to get in there, but we'll make it happen. what we do. I really love holly. It's just such a great looking plant. It's got all the natural green and red and these cool little pointy bits. And it always looks great. We had some growing wild in front of my house when I was little. And what they don't tell you is holly is sometimes kind of sharp, and I would get stuck in that holly bush on a regular basis. You'd think I'd have learned to avoid it, but nope. At least once a month, Jess is stuck in the holly bush again. Pretty good with our tones and colors through here. Just trying to get it just a little bit more depth before I swap to the next one. Still not sure what color I'm going to do this bow. I think that's going to end up being the very last thing I paint. Because I cannot decide. Now, this outer brocade here is also going to be used on the outside of her sleeves. Because usually whatever was the out outermost texture was what was used on the outermost sleeves as well. In this style of clothing. And then they would build up layers. You could tell what layer you were on based on what the texture and design was. So we're going to try to match this with this. And with this side. That's the tricky part. We need it all to look like the same fabric. It won't at first um, until we get in the patterning. But do your best to try to keep it roughly feeling the same. A little bit of pink through here. Just lighten this one up a bit. That 
was really surprised at how many pink dresses in this time period I found. You know, I wouldn't think that pink would be a very common pigment, but saw quite a few pink dresses. Apparently it was the purples and the deep rich blues that were the difficult pigments to get for that era. And that's another thing that's uh, good to study, especially if you're going to do clothing, is the types of pigments that were available, uh, what types of fabric were available, because it really explains why certain colors were used for things like royalty and this one's, you know, all the poor people had this color. Because it, it, what you have on hand dictates what is going to be used and valued more, not necessarily what looks better, which I always thought was funny. It's like, I like this color more, but it's so easy to get that no one cares about it. Since I have cats, I have an issue with cat hair just constantly getting on my paints, on my brushes, in my water. Um, there's no tried and true way to keep that from happening. It's kind of the price you pay for having pets, which is one of the reasons why people ask to say if a, an item is from a pet-free home. It's just because you never know where those hairs are going to go. But as long as you pay close attention, you can usually catch the hairs before they get dried into your painting, usually, and can lift them out. I've almost always had to lift out a hair and then go back and repaint that section or add more color to it because I, in the process of lifting out the hair, I lifted out the color too. That happens. You just add on more. Laugh about your silly animals. Keep going. One of my friends was so happy one day she got a covered palette for her paints so she could put the lid on the palette and her cat figured out how to chew on the corner until the lid popped off and then he sat on her paints so that was short-lived <laughs> very smart cat he lived to be a very old cat we're not quite sure how, since, you know, he was always getting into trouble. Because that's what the smart cats do, but... He made it for a very long time. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about where this one is going. I like where the colors have gone. I know you can't really see much on this screen, but there's quite a few different colors going through here. I will take a photograph of my camera phone later, but that should give you a little bit of feel of the pinks and the blues and purples. That give you that depth and form. We're going to take a break now. I'm trying to make my streaming be not in nine hour segments so you can actually rewatch things. And uh, I'll be back later with more. <laughs> 